Deep brain stimulation for me has just revolutionized how we take care of patients. We can explore things now we could never look at before. What people used to do is make a lesion. Uh, you, you can't get by with that very often anymore. I mean, if you do it right, fine, but you can't explore with lesions. That's what people did in the 30s and 40s, didn't work well. 30% of people died. You know, another 30% had significant uh, morbidities. And then that 40% that was left, you hoped that you didn't hurt them, and that some people actually got better. Uh, that's changed with deep brain stimulation. It's, it's really taken off. And now we've been reaching out, as have our BME brothers been reaching back to us. It, you really have to unify those two groups. The biomedical engineers and the physician scientists have to pull together. And we've been doing that more and more. And I think that's the part that's been the most exciting for me, is all the new things that we can do. These people didn't have any options before. These Parkinson's patients, dystonia patients, uh, some of the depression patients that are being treated. They had no options, they're at the end of the road. Now we've had patients with deep brain stimulation that have, those patients have gone out 10 years with significant benefit, reduced their medications, unheard of, with first line technology. So what could we do if we had better stuff, better tools, newer ideas, combining optogenetics, gene therapy, all the new stuff coming around the corner. Um, that's what's exciting. I mean, there's just a lot of stuff to be excited about. You know, I can only speak about the things that I do. Uh, not being an engineer, I'm not familiar with all the various areas and aspects of engineering. For me, it clearly comes down to the, uh, the neurosciences, neuroprosthetics, uh, how we can combine some of those neuroprosthetics with tools like optogenetics and gene therapy and deep brain stimulation, transcranial magnetic stimulation. Those areas in engineering that I would deal with would be delivery mechanisms, for example. Um, it would be leads and lead technology and programmers and uh, things of that nature, the things that I, I would want to have more information on and have more interaction with people that do that. Because I, I think we have limited interaction right now with those things. We tell people we need them and I think somebody goes off and tries to work on them, but when you come right down to it, we're really not always working side by side on those things. And that's what we need to do. I think there's two. I mean, one is to pull people together. And while we can say we all want to work together, and we all do, if you're physically separate from somebody at your institution, uh, it's very difficult then I think to pull those collaborations together. Uh, second thing is resources and dollars. I think dollars are starting to become a little bit more difficult to get. NIH funding is decreasing. It looks like the economy is still not picking up at all. And uh, as you know, if you remember a few years ago when our funding levels at NINDS went down to, I think it was like seventh percentile, there are a lot of very good people that were just struggling to stay alive. So I think partly it's going to be the funding and it's also going to be how we physically get together and share ideas and um, you know, pull our resources together and, and, and work together. Even at one institution, people are separate. So then how do you do that across institutions and then across countries? I mean, I think the bottom line is we need to be doing all of that better than we do now. You have to really enjoy the science of discovery, I think. If you enjoy the science of discovery, you'll do fine. And you can conquer anything. I mean, you can, it's not the hard coursework that's gonna kill you. Uh, it may be tough, it might hurt you a little bit, but it's, that's not going to stop you. Uh, what stops you is giving up and not having to drive. Look, there's a lot of hours. Um, you have to work hard to get NIH funding. It's not easy to do that. And if you don't have passion and you're not dedicated to it, it's going to be hard to sustain it. You just need the passion and the drive, and then I think it'll take care of itself.